Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're taking a look at some inconsistencies in Total War 3 Kingdom, namely with the armor stat on the unique armors in the game. Now last week in our item overview series, we took a look at all the unique armors in the game, and there were a ton of them, close to 100. And we took a look at their stats in terms of armor, attribute points, and any other additional bonuses on them, and we noticed a few things. There are obviously inconsistency among the stat choices and some oversight by the developers in later patches or later DLCs that's very inconsistent with the original design of the game on launch. And even on the launch version, there are some issues with the armor in the game. So today we're going to fix some of that by taking care of the worst offender, and that's with the armor stat, because it's probably one of the easiest thing to fix and also the main stat on many of these unique armor. Because the point of the armor item is to give you armor in combat. So we need some consistency here to match up all the characters so that their armor stat makes sense for their character design, no matter they were released in the base game or in one of the patches or in one of the DLCs. So what we see here off the bat is a chart with all the characters in the game according to the armor stat on their unique armor. So it ranges from three armor points all the way at the bottom with Zhuge Liang and Sima Yi to 80 armor points all the way on the top to Lü Bu, Ma Chao, and Dong Zhuo, and everything in between. So the first major design issue with this is that there are way too many different armor values. There's actually 16 of them, and some of them are just simply too close to each other to make any sense. For example, do you really need 32 armor, 36 armor, and 40 armor because they're only 4 points apart? Or do you need 45, 47, 50, and 65, 68, 70? Some of these just don't make sense. Like why do you have Xia Yuan as the only character in the game with 68 armor? Like when the armor value is only 2 points away from each other, there's really no point to make them different. It will just confuse the design. So that's the first thing we're going to fix. So let's wipe away all the armor and just look at the armor values. And we can simplify this design while making things a lot simpler and make a lot more sense just by spacing these out in regular intervals. And what we can do is to minimize the changes by keeping the value of fives. So 45, 55, 65, 75, these numbers have a large number of characters who currently have those armor value. So we're going to keep that. And what we're going to do is we're going to simplify the number line here to armor values ranging from 5 to 75. Now you could add an 85 at the very end if you want for very special characters. Like if you believe Lü Bu should have the best armor in the game, give him 85. I'm okay with that. But to keep things simple, we're just going to use these values here. Then the second issue that we're going to notice on the original chart is that there's a clear divide between two groups of armor values. One on the left side, we have typically what we associate with strategists or some commanders who don't really have combat. The artwork for their armor tend to be robes and their armor value vary from 3 to 15. Now, most of these characters are 10. The 3 only applies to Zhuge Liang and Sima Yi and that decision was made at the launch of the game for some reason. And then the 15 only applies to Li Ru and Xun Yu who were added in the Furious Wild DLC patch, and they're the only strategist who has 15, which is also very strange. So there's definitely inconsistency there. And then you have a huge list of 10, and then if you look on the right side, there's a few characters like Lady Mi and Lady Bian and Shi Xie, who somehow have way too high armor values for the robes that they're wearing. So we're going to fix that, but we're going to keep this divide in our new design, because this makes sense. You have combat generals and you have advisors or ladies who stay at home, so they don't need that much armor. So using our new number system and this divide, we're going to take away 25. So if we take away 25, we can divide everything 15 and less as non-combatant generals, and then 35 and higher as combatant generals. So there's no point to have a divide at 25 because the bigger gap will make this more clear. So that leaves us with this new line here, and we can start placing characters back in. So I'm actually just going to flush all the characters in at once and describe the logic behind this. 
So this here is my proposed change to the game, and I think it's for the better. So on the left, we first have the five ladies in the game. Diao Chan, Da Qiao, Xiao Qiao, Lady Mi, Lady Bian. They will all have five armor. Because when they put on their dress in the morning, they're not prepared to go on the battlefield. So they don't need actual armor stats. So they're going to get the lowest armor in the game. Then we have the rest of the strategists and a few commanders whose artwork of their armor is a robe that includes Wang Lang, Liu Biao, Yuan Shu, and Liu Zhang. Now for these four, they actually had 10 armor before, so they're actually getting a small buff. And then everyone else is strategists who had either 10 or 15 or 3. Now they're all going to be at 15. And the reason is pretty clear. 10 is a bit low. Strategists, even in history, had to go on the battlefield. They rode with the army, so they know that they could be thrown into combat situations. They're not going to be in their PJs or bathrobes on the battlefield. So wearing a little bit of armor under that robe, or maybe on top of the robe, makes sense for them. And I listed them in three columns, and there's some logic to this. So the first two columns on the left are characters who are not expected to be in combat. There's a couple exceptions here. Tao Tian kind of fits in between. Tao Tian historically wasn't a very advisor type of fellow. He was actually more of a vanguard type. And you actually see a little bit of instinct stack on his robe, which kind of makes sense. But at the point where he's introducing the gameplay in 194 or 191, he's a bit older. So perhaps he's not that hot tempered at Tao Tian from his younger days, and maybe he toned it back a bit. So having him at 15 kind of makes sense. But for Xu Shu and Zhou Yu, things are a little bit different on the right side here. So the right side here are people who are probably expected to be on the battlefield. And Zhou Yu in particular, even though he's a strategist in the game, he has double health, as in he has the health of a sentinel. So he's kind of in between. So I debated of moving these two to 35. And Xu Shu in particular was well-known swordsman in his youth before he transitioned to become a visor. So I believe the game also have him at double health as well. So these two are kind of in between, but I think for consistency's sake, every strategist max out at 15. We are not going to put anyone into the 35 range. So they're kind of borderline in my thought process, but I think at the end of the day, for consistent game design, if you're a strategist, you can max out at 15. And if you're not expected on the battlefield, you're a five. And for some commanders who are wearing robes, they're going to drop down to 15. So that's the logic there. Then on our divide on the right. Now this is mostly based on what the original value of their armors are in the game. So first we have people like Tai Shi Ci and Huang Zhong, who are well-known archers historically. And in the game, they kind of apply this by giving them 32 armor previously. Now it's a very low value. We're going to buff it up a little bit to 35. But because they're known to be archers, perhaps they're wearing something that helps their dexterity be more nimble. So they're going to lower their value a little bit. Then for He Jin and Liu Bei, I think the game's rationale to keep them around 36 and 40 is because they were leaders or government officials. So they didn't deck themselves fully in armor and they had some you know, robe component to their armor set. So we're going to keep them with that design and keep them at round 35. Xu Chu might feel a little weird here, but that's because historically, or at least in Romance of Three Kingdom, he was known to take off his armor in duels and then fight Ma Chao half naked for about a day and a night. So in this sense, the game had him at a lower armor value because of that. Even though historically he was the commander of the heavy tiger and leopard cavalry unit. So he definitely was deck out in armor. But we're going to keep with the spirit of romance of Three Kingdoms and keep him at a lower armor setting. He doesn't really need the high armor for gameplay purposes anyways because he has great skills to keep him alive. So I think it's fine to keep him thematically at a lower armor value just to have that extra tie-in with the romance of the Three Kingdom. Then at 45... I decided to feature what's called the Southern Armies. Now, the reason why we did this is because in the original in-game armor right now, Sun Jian, Sun Ce, Huang Gai, Chen Pu all have 45 armor. So somehow all the Wu factions 
had 45 armor to begin with. And we can think of this thematically as the southern technology for making armor max out at 45. So I went along with this and gave every single historical Wu character all 45 armor. And that's a great theme tie-in because now you have 45 armor, you know he's historically a Wu character, and there's a reasoning behind that. And it kind of goes along with what the game already has. Now, Surin here, I debated for a while if we should throw her into the 5 category or 45 category. Historically, obviously she never fought, but we know from romance and a little bit of history that she liked to play fighting. So she would dress up in armor and has maids that, you know, play fight with her. So maybe she had good armor. So 45, same as her brother, same as her father, kind of makes sense in this sense. And we're going to keep her at this. And plus, she's a vanguard. So there's a little bit of specialty there. She's expected to be on the battlefield in game. And then Zhou Tai had really high armor before. I think he was at 75 in the base game right now. We're dropping him all the way to 45 because he doesn't need it. The guy is undying. So let him be undying at 45 armor and thematically match up with all the Wu characters. Then along with them, we have people like Liu Yao, Yan Bai Hu, and the rest of the bandit gang. So the reasoning here for Yan Bai Hu and Yan Yu is they're also from the south. Liu Yao is also from the south. So they have the same quality armor as the rest of the Wu factions. And since we already have half the bandit characters at 45, let's say that the bandit technology for making armor can't really go much higher. So Zheng Jiang and Zhang Yan would be both at 45. And I think that's just a nice thematic tie-in. Then using that same logic, moving on to a tier above that at 55, we have the Shu faction. So here we have Zhang Fei, Guan Yu, Zhao Yun, Wei Yan. So obviously we're missing a couple characters like Huang Zhong, Liu Bei, and Ma Chao. But the reason why for Liu Bei already explained, because he is a lord, he will dress a little bit down. For Huang Zhong, his reasoning is because he's an archer. Ma Chao's reasoning is because he's going to belong to another faction most of the time in game and be part of his own faction. And we have a better logic for that for 75 a little bit later. For the rest of these guys here, they're the ones who spent most of their career with Liu Bei from a very early on stage, and they represent armor technology perhaps in the Xu province or the Central Plains, and 55 is a nice balanced middle point for the combat armor, and that's usually where the game developers kind of spam value, like they don't know where to give them, they just give them a default 55. In this case, the 55 will be kind of the middle ground. If the south technology is only at 45, then the central plains max out at 55. And then we're going to see the frontier folks coming up, as well as Cao Cao's Kingdom of Wei with slightly higher value. So speaking of higher value with Kingdom of Wei, we have Cao Cao leading Yue Jin, Zhang Liao, Xia Hou Dun, Xia Hou Yuan, Xu Huang, Dian Wei, all at 65. Now there was a couple character here that I debated shifting up, in particularly Zhang Liao, because obviously Zhang Lao served under Liu Bu for a period of time. So moving him to 75 would be okay as well. But I think there's already too many characters at 75. And I'm also debating whether Liu Bu needs to move up to like a new category of say 85. Which is totally reasonable. So I think keeping the Wei theme would probably work better here. Especially if we get the 5 elites in the future. Having them all at 65 would be a bit cooler. And Cao Cao here at 65 is also kind of debatable. You might argue that he was the Prime Minister of the Han. So he should be decked out a bit more. That's true. But he was also fighting on the front lines quite a bit. And given his wealth, I'm sure he could afford really good armor. So dropping him to something like Liu Bei would make less sense. Liu Bei was poor. So it makes sense that his armor would be worse. Since he was selling straw sandals for the longest time. So Liu Bei is 35. It's also at 65. I'm totally down with that. And then at 75, we have... The best armor now obviously we can shift these numbers up a bit more 85 is totally fine we have 80 before it's not like 85 is way too high uh, but what we have here mainly on the left side is rich people armor so we have Yuan Shao, Liu Chong, Ji Ling so Ji Ling pretty much spent all of Yuan Shu's money bought himself a really cool set of armor even in the base game I think his armor value right now is 70 or 75 so rich armor Took all the money from Rapid Tiger Infantry Shield, decked him out 75. Liu Chong, Prince of Chen, has a ton of money, bought himself a really good armor at 75. Yuan Shao, the leader of the Yuan clan, 
owns four provinces in the north, decked himself in armor. I think he also has 70 armor in the base game right now anyways, so moving him to 75 make total sense. And then in the middle there we have Dong Zhuo's people. So Dong Zhuo and Lü Bu were the characters with 80 armor in the base game, so they drop actually a little bit to 75. And then Li Jue picked it up after Dong Zhuo. He's basically mini Dong Zhuo in the game. He will also get 75. And Gao Shun here follows Li Bu. So he will also get 75. And this represents the Bin province and the Lan province. Perhaps the armor required for those frontier battles are a bit thicker or a bit better. 75 value. And then the rest are all frontier generals and also minor faction generals. So we have Han Sui, frontier all the way in the west. Wang Fu Song, who was stationed in Shuofang at the beginning of the game, technically in history, also frontier men all the way in the northwest. Gong Sun Zan, frontier men all the way in the northeast. Ma Teng, Ma Chao, also frontier generals on the west. So they have better armor. And I think it's also fair because now we have minor factions in the game with characters with good high value armor. And then we have most of the factions in the game with defined values that kind of can tell you what faction they belong to historically and kind of make sense overall in the game. So I really like this setup. I hope they think about changing it. Now we're not done here because you notice we threw out a lot of characters from this list. There are no yellow turbans here. There are no eight princes here. And there are no non-deployable general here. And of course, those make sense. Like we don't have to make them super consistent with these group because this is the group that you're going to be playing around with for most of the games. But we're still going to talk about how these changes, if implemented, will affect those groups. So let's look at those armors and see if they need to be adjusted now that we have this system set up in the game. And those armors, starting with the yellow turbans, we'll take a look at He Yi's. He has 45 armor. I think that's fair. His armor is not super dense, not super heavy. 45 is the value. We just had to give the Wu factions, and he can have it. 45 stays the same. Then we have his general, He Man, who, if you look at the artwork, has a much denser armor or better armor compared to what He Yi has. So his is going to bump up to 55 from his base game value of 50. And then we have Huang Shao, who is more of a scholar warrior. Now, the artwork shows a very nice armor, but you can see that he wears it over the robe here. And I think we can probably drop it to 45 to be a little bit more consistent with He Yi, perhaps. And it wouldn't really hurt him because he boosts a lot of range units anyway, so you're not going to really use him that much in combat. And then for the lieutenant that starts under Huang Shao, we have Pei Wen Shao. So Pei Wen Shao has 72 armor in the base game, which I think is way too high for a yellow turban. So we're going to bump that all the way down to 55 just to have consistency among the yellow turban factions and with the rest of the game. So we have 45-55 for both He Yi's faction and Huang Shao's faction. But things will be a little different once we shift out west to Gongdu. So Gongdu has 70 at the beginning in his armor. I'm not going to give him 75 because that seems too high. I'll let him match Cao Cao's faction's armor and go to 65, which I think is still decently high, especially after the changes that I'm proposing to the game. And then dropping down to Zhang Kai. Now Zhang Kai was a well-known assassin, and he has 72 base armor, which I think once again is too high. I debated between dropping him to 55 to match the two other lieutenant generals, but at the end of the day, since Gongdu's faction tend to be more veteran focused, tend to be more heavy infantry focused, let's just make that their theme and have them at 65 for both of the generals. And then moving along to the Mandate of Heaven Yellow Turbans, we have the three Zhang brothers, starting with Zhang Jiao. So Zhang Jiao here has a robe that has 10 armor. I'm going to drop this to 5 instead of bumping it to 15. And the reason is Zhang Jiao, of course, led armies in battle, but he was more of a spiritual figure. Like he wasn't the frontline general at the end of the way. So I think his armor should reflect that and just go to 5. Plus, his special in-game ability needs to get himself killed. So dropping the armor actually have synergies with that and would make more sense in terms of character design. So I think we drop him to 5 and he can join the ladies at 5. And then Zhang Bao, his brother, 35 armor. I think that's totally fine. We keep it the same. And Zhang Liang has 55 armor, which I think is also fine. And we can just keep it the same. 
And that's all the yellow turbans. So moving on to the next DLC, we have the eight princes. Now eight princes do not interact with the other factions, so we don't really need to change them so that they can synergize well with the rest of the roster, but just among the eight princes. First up, we have Sima Lun. So you can see here, most of his stats are on cunning. So he's more of the commander that's never going to come out in the field, more of a strategist type hybrid. He has 25, which is the value that we don't have on our list. Of course, he could keep it and be a special character because he also have the 55 plus stats, which is just insane. Or we can just drop him to 15 and just be consistent with what we have so far. So I decided let's drop him to 15. And then for the other eight princes, Sima Yong, 75 out in the west make total sense with our logic from the rest of the roster make sense with himself let him keep it sima wei here good armor 45 decent um not wearing much underneath perhaps that's why 45 let him keep it and then sima yue 50. so sima yue is more of a cunning character in history and i don't think he needs to have that much armor on himself so we're going to actually drop this down to 45 and that's still pretty good and not too much of a change from what the game has for him at 50. And then we have Sima Ying, who's a strategist in the game. 20 armor, dropped at 15, consistent with the rest of the roster we have. Sima Ai, 55, let him keep it. Sima Jiong, 55, let him keep it. Sima Liang, 55, let him keep it. And that's all the eight princes. So we're trying to change as few things as possible while making things consistent with our proposed changes. And then after this DLC, we can talk about the non-deployable characters from Mandate of Heaven. Now, why are we talking about non-deployable characters? Well, for the Emperor's robe here, it's fine. There's no armor value. Beautiful. What happened here? Empress He's robe has 10 armor value, but she's undeployable. Change that. Change that to zero. The attendant's robe, perfect, no armor. The minister's robe, perfect, no armor. The courtier's robe, perfect, no armor. So just a small change to Empress Hula to make sure that she does not have armor value because she can't use it because she's a non-deployable character. Then we have A Furious Wild where we have the Nanman factions. And I propose a few changes because I think the developers went with consistency here but also laziness because every single Nanman characters have 44 base armor. Every single one of them, no matter how the character design looks, like Mulu, who doesn't wear a shirt, has pants that matches armor that Meng Huo is wearing. So we're going to change things up. Meng Huo here actually looked like he has armor. Bump it up, 55. Lady Zhu Rong has armor, but more leather base, 45. A very small change from the 44. And then King Mulu, not wearing anything, cunning as his main attribute. We can think of him as a strategist. Drop him to 15. King Sha Mo Ke, wearing some leather and some fur. Bump him up a little, 45. King Wu Tugu, wearing the rattan armor, which in Romance of the Three Kingdom is described as impenetrable by swords and spears. So we're going to bump it all the way to 65. Now this is a big boost considering he has so many other bonuses. So maybe add in the negative effect of double damage from fire, which is Rattan armor's weakness to begin with. So I think that would be a nice balance for King Wu Tugu and uh, bump that armor up. And then finally, we have King Duo Si, which is just wearing a little, you know, overcoat here, nothing inside. 15 armors, decent for him. 18 cunning proves that he's a strategist and uh, we're good. That fixes all the armor settings in the game. And if we go back and look at what we started with in terms of all this mess with 16 different armor values all over the place with things that didn't make sense. You know, Lady Bian's using spider silk to give herself 55 armor, or perhaps that's what Shi is doing down south um, to the point where we have a much cleaner setup here that makes a lot more sense. So hopefully you guys agree and uh, definitely give this a like if you enjoyed it. And we'll come back and talk about all the basic armors in the game because I skipped over that for the armor overview. And in the future, if we have time or if I have time, I'll take a look at the design of each armor in more details in terms of their attribute as well as their bonuses in terms of stats because that will require some tweaking in terms of game balance and also in terms of how the characters portrayed in history versus their romance portrayal to see like if Dan Wei needs more range block chance or 
maybe a negative range block chance for some characters like Xiao Dun who took an arrow to the eye, and so forth. So hopefully you guys enjoy this one. This one's a very easy fix for the balancing because it's easy to achieve consistency. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye!